What's up guys, Everyday iTech Tech here, and today on November 4th, one day after the official release of iOS 26.1, the iOS 26.2 beta release is out now. All right, so kicking it off, iOS 26.2 beta comes in at 8.52 gigabytes on my iPhone 17. It states, iOS beta gives you an early preview of upcoming apps, features, and technologies. Please back up your iPhone before you install the beta. For more information, please visit one of the following programs, Apple Beta Software Program. It just talks about which devices are available for beta testing and how to participate. And then the Apple Developer Program, where it talks about developer activities, including code, models, Apple intelligence, the new liquid glass design, the devices the developer program is available on, and to join the program to get the latest tools and SDKs. Now, while updating, my iPhone 17 got stuck on preparing for update. I had to force turn off my iPhone, and then finally it carried on, but preparing the update still took for Ever. Also, while installing the update, my iPhone just turned off and it was not turning on for some time. So I finally ended up turning it on manually. And now we are at the setup screen. So agreeing to the terms, it brings us to iPhone analytics. And that's it. Now we get the get started button and we are in iOS 26.2 beta 1. All right. So here is the build number for iOS 26.2 beta 1. And also, if I go to see how much space I have available, I have 476.2. 34 gigabytes after updating and before updating I had 477.35 gigabytes available. So it looks like we have a little less space with the new features being added in iOS 26.2. Now in my last video on the official release of iOS 26.1 I mentioned how iOS 26.1 actually frees up a significant amount of space. I even got a comment from Matt Mills 69 stating I gained almost 20 gigs just by updating. So right now, iOS 26.1 seems to be the gold standard. It also fixed a bunch of bugs with battery drain, the keyboard mistype issue, and also Apple CarPlay not working, all while adding cool new features that people wanted. So overall, I would give iOS 26.1 an A+. All right, so what's new? Well, for starters, if you go to customize the lock screen and tap on the clock, you can now change the look of liquid glass on the clock to make it more or less transparent. It looks looks pretty cool, although it may affect visibility, but it gives it this nice glass look. In the health app, Apple has refined the sleep score categories. High now requires a score of 81 to 95, which was previously 70 through 89, and very high replaces excellent as the top tier category. Up next, the news app now shows categories up at the top. So you have sports, puzzles, politics, business, food, and in the top right, it now says try news plus free, whereas before it just said get news plus. The bottom navigation has also been refined. So before you had today, news plus, sports, audio, and then the search. Now you have today, news plus, audio, following, and then the search. Now the following tab actually replaces the previous search. So you guys can see it brings us to the same spot. And now when you want to go back to a different tab, you have all of them available right from the get-go at the start. Whereas on iOS 26.1, you would have to first tap the news icon and then they would become available. A new airdrop pin pairing feature is being tested, which may require require a pin code for first time airdrop connections to improve privacy. Up next, the podcast apps now includes Apple intelligence to support automatic chapter generation, podcast linking and show recommendation. However, the new tab is still broken for me. It says cannot connect. The page cannot be loaded. Try again. And this was the same for me in iOS 26.1. Overall, iOS 26.2 beta one just feels a little bit more buggy to me, especially when swiping over to the widgets page. It seems to stutter and lag a bit, and I did not have this issue on iOS 26.1. But of course, this is a beta, and betas are buggy. Although feeling buggy, the Geekbench scores are significantly higher. On iOS 26.2, I'm getting a single core score of 3,707, and a multi-core score of 9,471. Whereas on iOS 26.1, I was getting a single core score of 3,541, and a multi-core score of 8,904. If we do hear about any more new features, I'll be sure to keep you guys posted. I'll be testing these new betas out. So like and subscribe for more. So like and subscribe for more. Peace.